Hello and welcome to the Big Review Ski with Chicago Town Pizza. My name's Owen and there's a very cosy looking Rory over there. Rory, I know I said it last week as well, but I absolutely love your winter jumpers. Winter is my time of year. It's like when, it's when I shine. It's when uh, the jumper game is on point, the beard gets to grow a bit longer. Uh, yeah, this is, this is my time. Uh, the rest of the year, uh, not so much. I just kind of stay indoors <laughs> and wait for winter. Look at, I hibernate. Oh. It's like backwards hibernation. Incredible. Seeing yeah. as you are such a like a winter Christmas jumper expert, can I get your opinion on my one if that's okay? Yeah, like it's a solid it's a solid yeah, example of the, the genre. The snowman there as well. I mean Oh geez. If, yeah, I know. There's I more to it. I was kind of digging the 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 low key aspect, just like one or two little droplets of snow. But it's nice, yeah. It's like it's definitely a Christmas jumper, for sure. Yeah, I can hear the pity coming through in your voice, so mm. thank you. For that now, seeing as there are so many amazing movies and TV shows being released at this time of year, it is Rory and my jobs to separate the Christmas crackers from the Christmas turkeys. I always feel like turkeys get a bit of a bad rap because they actually are really delicious. So it's just turkeys mm. is actually a good thing. But do you know what else is really really delicious, Rory? Ham. Ham. Yep. Yep. Do you know what else? Uh. Like roast potatoes and stuff, all that stuff on the side of the turkey. I do love roast potatoes as well. One more chance now. Yeah. Do you know what else is delicious, Roy? Is it pizza? <laughs> it is. More specifically, free pizza. So all you have to do to be in with the chance of winning some delicious Chicago Town free pizza goodies is head over to the Big Reviewski Twitter account and enter our competition there. The very, merry, very, very best of luck to everybody for that competition. Now, Roy, you've got a wee, you've got a wee secret that you didn't really want to tell anybody about, but I said you have to talk about this on the Big Reviewski. You wanted to keep it to yourself in a very selfish kind of way, but what uh, am I forcing you to tell everybody this week? This is. This isn't the platform for this conversation. I asked you not to. I, this was between me and you and, and my doctor. And I said, please. Say it. <laughs> um, as a friend. I think what you're talking about is Arcane. The completely, as far as I can tell, under the radar show that arrived on Netflix uh, in November. So it's an animated show, which I think maybe some people would be like, oh, it's a cartoon. It's not for me. Don't. Don't don't have that mindset. It is based on a video game. And again, that's I can already see the demographics just falling off a cliff. Just like, no, absolutely not. See ya. Bye. Uh, again, try not to try not to let that be the case. It is based on League of Legends, uh, a, sh a, a game that like I haven't I've seen other people play and thought, I don't like that. It, it's such an amazing show. And no one I know in real life or via Zoom, has been watching it. It's a kind of fantasy epic action drama uh, set in a mysterious world of science fiction and magic. It's got some uh, very famous voice actors, including including Hayley Steinfeld, who we only spoke to uh, like two weeks ago for Hawkeye. And it's, I, I kind of don't want to say too much about it because I went in blind off like a, a, someone on Twitter was like, this is the best show, why is not no one talking about it? I'm like, is it? And I watched it and I was like, yeah, they were right. It is maybe, uh, one of the best shows of 2021. Uh, so much so that if you go onto IMDb right now, they have Arcane listed as the, I think it's either 14th or 15th greatest TV show ever made. Like it's up there with Breaking Bad and uh, you know, like Mad Men. Like it's, it's, that's how high it has been ranked. Uh, and all the episodes are on Netflix now. It's already been, it's already been commissioned for a second season. So we know it's more to come. Um, yeah, just, you know, again, we've mentioned this before, there is a, a period of time around Christmas and New Year's when dates don't matter and days don't matter and the passage of time seems to slow down completely and we all are like, what am I watching? I'm full of food, be it turkey or pizza. What, I'm, what am I going to do? Seriously, yeah, dedicate some time to, to Arcane. Uh, Highly, 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 highly recommended. My mommy is actually really excited about this one because she's from Martine in Dublin. So she'll be really interested in seeing like that kind of area where she grew up as well. And I'm particularly looking forward to uh, hearing the Artane Boys Band on the soundtrack oh. as well. So thanks for the recommendation, Roy. Thank no you. No problem. If you're thinking of heading to the cinema this week, we have a selection of three big releases for you to choose from. Up first, it's Clifford the Big Red Dog. This is based on the iconic children's uh, book from America, originally written way back in the 1960s. It spawned a whole 
Clifford the Big Red Dog franchise because obviously everything has to have a franchise. And in 2021, we have now reached the point where somebody thought it was a good idea to get Jack Whitehall involved. So that's always an interesting choice whenever you decide to go down that route. Uh, Basically tells the story of a young girl in New York who rescues a small red puppy, but he's a magical puppy. And depending on how much you love him, he grows uh, even, even bigger. And obviously she loves him loads. So um, CG looks a wee bit dodgy. As I said, you got Jack Whitehall in there. You also have John Cleese, who's been a bit dodgy himself uh, these days sometimes. Um, so it is the big kind of family friendly fair in the run up to Christmas as well. Or if you love Jack Whitehall, or if you love Giant Dogs, or you actually have a giant dog at home as well. So will you be rushing out to see this one, do you reckon? Yeah, uh, no, no. Uh, there's something about this that I don't like the look of. I keep expecting it to be leading into, and then the next film is Clifford the Big Red Dog versus Kong versus Godzilla. There's something just off. The vibe is off for me. Like the dog, fair enough, it's a teeny dog, and then you love it and it gets big. Why is it red? Why is it a big red dog? I don't like it. Magic. No. Obviously magic. Um, if Hollywood are listening, and obviously they are, if they can make Clifford the Big Red Dog versus uh, Godzilla the Big Lizard and Kong the Big Ape happen, uh, we would that. love to see that <laughs> as well. Please, yes, please. Um, what's our next release, Rory? Next one is Don't Look Up, which is the latest movie from the guy who previously gave us Anchorman and Anchorman 2 and Talladega Nights, but then moved on to stuff like The Big Short and Vice. It is a metaphor Owen it is a metaphor because it is a film about an asteroid that is going to hit the earth and two scientists who are played by Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence are trying to warn everyone that this catastrophe is is coming and there's something we should do about it but everyone's like ah we'll just we'll wait and see won't we we'll just wait maybe till the very last second of action and then decide if we should do something so uh, if you've been paying attention at all to the last couple of decades about people screaming about global warming and stuff like that this is probably going to ring a bell uh, the rest of the cast includes like I think it's half the known uh, like famous people like Meryl Streep and Jonah Hill and Ariana Grande and just the cast list is insane so it's clear that everyone uh, wants to work with uh, this director now everyone except Will Ferrell but we're not going to get into that we're just going to stick to the to this movie so it's arriving in cinemas select Irish cinemas this weekend or you can probably wait two weeks because that's when it's going to arrive on Netflix. And last but not least, our final big cinematic release this week is West Side Story. Obviously, if you haven't seen the iconic 1963 version, uh, please do go back and watch that, because it is just brilliant from start to finish. It looks incredible. The songs are amazing. This has been revamped by none other than Steven Spielberg. It's been in the workings for a few years now. Obviously, there's been delays with COVID and stuff as well. Uh, This time, the roles of Tony and Maria are played by Ansel Elgort and Rachel Ziegler. It's amazing. You should go back and find the footage of Rachel Ziegler. before she became famous because she's had some small bit parts, but Spielberg picked her out and she is going to be absolutely perfect in this. Um, The release is a little bit more poignant now, obviously with the news, the sad passing of Stephen Sondheim, the like Broadway musical God, um, who sadly died there just very recently. And he wrote the lyrics when he was 25 for the original West Side Story Broadway production. And it was kind of his first gig and he was like, yeah, whatever, I'll just make you know, the most amazing lyrics of all time. But uh, we have a lovely wee clip here at one of the premieres of the film where Steven Spielberg was talking about how close Sondheim was to the creation of this brand new version and how he would come and watch uh, early versions of the footage and see how the music was being used as well. Because obviously Spielberg's going to put his own spin on as well. The famous Spielberg spin, is that a thing? It is now. You're welcome, Steven Spielberg. But here's a wee clip of Spielberg talking about uh, his appreciation for the wonderful Stephen Sondheim. Stephen Sondheim was not of an age, but for all time. And Stephen was a big part of the making of our film, West Side Story, from the earliest screenplay, drafts, to every recording session, which Steve attended without fail. Uh, Listening with his eyes closed, he'd sway, he'd swoon, or he'd grimace and flinch. (laughs) So I caught myself watching Steve's expression, sometimes more than the actors, 
because they perfectly reflected what everyone was doing. So there you have it, our three big releases this week. Clifford the Big Red Dog, Don't Look Up and West Side Story. And now it's time for a very intriguing looking trailer, Roy, that caught your eye this week. Yeah, so thanks to a little known hidden gem, no one's watched it. Not a single article can be found online about it. Uh, I don't know if, I, have we even talked about it on this show? Have we talked about it on Joe.ie at all? Who's to say? Mm -mm. Uh, Squid Game has made South Korean Netflix thriller drama series is just, everyone's like, what's the next? What is it? Give me the next Squid Game. Give me the next Squid Game. And recently we actually were given uh, the next Squid Game in a show called Hellbound, another South Korean uh, thriller drama series that ended up topping the Netflix viewer list. Uh, but looking forward, we have just gotten a teaser trailer for a new South Korean drama thriller series sci-fi thing called The Silent Sea. Uh, and all episodes will arrive on Netflix on Christmas Eve. So perfect, really just spot on timing. But like Netflix, they, they know what they're doing sometimes, don't they? They're just like, this is like the definition of a trapped audience. It's just like, we got you. You can't go anywhere. You're full of food. You can't move. Watch this whole thing. So it's to do with uh, the distant future where Earth has suffered some uh, very strong droughts and basically the whole planet is like one big desert now. Uh, so so ask some astronauts head to the moon to find a mysterious science sample thing that was on a moon base that could help solve the problem of the Earth being a big ball of sand now. But it being along the vibe of Squid Game and Hellbound, probably fair to assume things don't go as well as they'd hope. Not that things were going well anyway, like this, the Earth is still sand and they are on the moon looking for a thing. So it's not like they're in an ideal situation, but uh, it's, it's fair to assume it gets worse. And that's, listen, things getting worse. If that doesn't scream Christmas, I don't know what does. Well, I was going to say, like, if you're planning on sitting down this Christmas Eve with your family to watch It's a Wonderful Life or no. The Muppet Christmas no. Cargill or whatever tradition you might have. No, forget it. Watch uh, The Silent Sea where uh, crew members are horrifically picked <laughs> off one by one. Um, and you probably can't get any sleep that night. So no sleep on Christmas Eve because Santa's coming. No sleep on Christmas Day night because you're so terrified from this show. Can't wait. Perfect. Now it's time for the small screen releases at home this week. And up first, Rory, this is probably one of the most highly anticipated shows of the entire year. What have we got? It's And Just Like That, which is the sort of reboot, sort of sequel, who knows, of Sex and the City. Uh, it's three of the original four. Uh, so Kim Cattrall's not back, but the other three ladies are. And it's just picking up on their lives in Manhattan, all these years later. The trailers really sell the whole, we're still fashionable and we still like martinis, but like, you know, personal problems. It is interesting that they've swerved away from Sex and the City as the title. And the, the trailers and stuff don't seem to mention too much like sex stuff. So maybe they're, no, I don't want to say maturing, but like maybe they're trying to just swerve away from it being that, that raunchy show that was in the 90s that everyone was like, oh, did you see what happened in Sex and the City last night? Whereas now, like, it could be like the emotional version of that. Like, did you see what happened in Sex and the City last night? <laughs> um, so we'll see. Like, it's uh, everyone in the world is going to watch it, regardless of whether they thought Sex and the City was, was good or not, because it is going to be such a, uh, like a talking point on the internet. So we don't really need to talk about this because everyone already knows it's coming. And we could, we could sit here right now and go, this is the worst show that's ever been. Do not. Well, no one's going to listen because it's it's Sex in the City. I'm not. Of course, I'm not saying that. It could end up being fantastic, but it doesn't matter. It's critic proof. So, and just like that. Oh, it's on now. It's uh, it's coming to now. <laughs> yeah, I like your uh, your own personal description of it, where it's like it's very fashionable. 
uh, drinks a lot mm. of martinis and just has lots of personal problems. So I can see very relatable there as well. So yeah, no, as you said, everyone in the entire world is definitely going to be watching it. Uh, our next series being released is called Landscapers and it's also coming to Now and Sky as well. And this is kind of sneaking in under the radar. It stars Olivia Coleman and David Thulis as a married couple who, after kind of uh, a decade or so, uh, a really horrible crime is discovered and their connection to it as well and they're brought in for question now this series the trailer looks fantastic and Roy I know you've had a sneak peek at the first couple of episodes as well it just seems really really dark and twisted so if you're into that kind of drama and obviously with the caliber of the cast involved as well you know like somebody like uh, Olivia Coleman and David Tillis are only going to pick really excellent projects anyway. Um, so yeah, how did your sneak peek of this one go? Yeah, again, it's it's another one of those where I was so happy I went in blind. I wasn't aware it was actually based on a true story. I wasn't aware of the stylistic choices they were going to make. Olivia Coleman somehow is like highly, highly, highly regarded and a best actress Oscar winner and da 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 da, and simultaneously so underappreciated in everything that she does so uh, it's great again just to see her be brilliant um yeah from what i've seen it is fantastic and another one of those shows that i think people will end up having lots of discussions about lots of lots of talking points and interesting thinking points but I'm going to leave it for when people actually get to see it because I don't want to spoil anything. Lovely stuff. The next one is The Unforgivable starring Sandra Bullock, which I like even trying to watch the trailer for this box. It takes you to like an emotional blubbering wreck after two and a half mm. minutes of it. But uh, obviously the film is being released this week. Yeah. So two, two, two things here. Sandra Bullock really wants that next Oscar. She wants it. <laughs> she... She's got the Oscar taste, and now she's like, I will do whatever it takes to be a double Oscar winner. I'll, I'll, I, like, I don't care how sad, how miserable, how, uh, do, you, do you remember Nicole Kidman did that film, and they, like, uglified her, um, and it was called, like, uh, oh, God damn, I can't remember the name of it. it like, here's the poster, that one. I can't remember the name of it, um, but they, it's, it's Nicole Kidman's attempt to win an Oscar, but it's, it's so loudly screaming for that Oscar that you're just like, did you, did, uh, did you have to do that? Uh, and it's kind of the same with this, like we know Sandra Bullock can act. Um, so yeah, like it's it just, it's such a misery porn film. Uh, and she barely talks in it. So oh, yeah, it was, it was a real, it was a real chore to get through. I just like it when she's having fun. When she's having fun, I'm having fun. There's a film next year called The Lost City of D, which is a rom-com with Channing Tatum. Perfect. Give that. Give her an Oscar for that. Don't, not this. Not this sad. No, no, no. Destroyer. That was the name of the Nicole Kidman film. That was bad as well, though. They're all bad. No, they're not. But those two are. <laughs> I love when I was watching the trailer for this one and Sandra Bullock has been released from prison at the start. I remember that Ocean's 8 actually kind of starts in the same kind of way as mm. well, except obviously there's a completely different tone and feel. But for a second, I thought, oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be nice and jaunty with a cool sort of David Holmes soundtrack for the, unfor uh, for the Unforgivable. But that's not the way, not the way it panned out. No. No. Uh, last but not least, our final small screen uh, release this week is it's Guy Ritchie is back, uh, teaming up with Jason Statham to do what looks like very Jason Statham y things in Wrath of Man. Yeah. So this is the first time they've worked together, I think, since Snatch, which I think is 15 years ago. Uh, I always assume Jason Statham and Guy Ritchie are constantly working together, but it turns out, no. So yeah, he is a, a new hire at one of those armoured cash van security places. Uh, it stars Ireland's own Neve Algar, she's in this. Josh Hartnett, remember him? Remember the early noughties? <laughs> Josh Hartnett's in this. Uh, it's fine. It's a Jason Statham film. It's a Jason Statham film that isn't a Fast and Furious film. And I think any non Fast and the Furious film or The Meg that stars Jason Statham is essentially the same film over and over again. Like if you could if you could put up like The Mechanic or Rogue or War, like I could list these and I know on Doherty you'd be like, are they all Jason Statham films? Are you making some of them up? Jason Statham uh, has cornered the market in one word uh, 
action film titles anyway. There's also uh, Safe yeah. is in there as well. Crank. Yeah. He just he's like I'm actually surprised he starred in Wrath of Man. It's two words too many for him usually. But um, yeah, Wrath of Man also out this week. And the fact you mentioned the Meg as well, absolutely love the Meg. Uh, and I wish I had picked that for my choice for pizza in a movie oh. uh, this week with Chicago Town Pizza, but. You didn't tell me it before the show, so that's fine. <laughs> um, what I have gone for this week, though, is obviously we're in December. We're feeling nice and festive as well. I've gone for a Christmassy sort of choice, but it's not necessarily a Christmas film, but it falls into that category of films that you do love to watch around this time of year. Um, we briefly mentioned it on last week's show uh, that they were all added to Now and Sky, but my choice for this week uh, for pizza in a movie is from 2001. It's the 20th anniversary of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's <laughs> Stone. Harry, Ron, what are you, what are you laughing at? Ron and Hermione, they're all back. Now, this is, I'm picking this one, mm. but if you want to go and watch all eight and look at this as an eight and one choice, hey, that's fine as well. <laughs> but um, no, my one, what is it? What are you laughing at? What am I laughing at? Well, um, one that you you have surreptitiously ser- ser- picked eight movies for your pizza and a movie. So eight what? pizzas and eight what? movies. It's allowed. Yes, please. Uh, okay. And the other one is Harry Potter. Jeez. Now, under normal circumstances, I would feel like this could lose. But I feel pretty good about it. I feel okay about it. Because I picked Elf. <laughs> oh, I'm not like you, absolute scumbag. Oh, that's so annoying. You're obviously going to. Yeah, so oh, it's, I'm it's absolutely Christmas. living at that. I want to change mine. I no, pick Elf. It's I pick Jinx. It's Elf. Christmas we earlier in the Elf. show. I I mentioned Will Ferrell, so I definitely had the the groundwork was put in place for this. I could sit here in silence for the next. 30 to 45 seconds, just saying nothing and just letting you all know that I picked Elf and that I don't have to try because it's Elf and everyone loves Elf. Just last week, Hayley Steinfeld and Jeremy Renner both said Elf was their favourite Christmas movie of all time. So, Elf? Elf does have one of the best bits of physical comedy of all time whenever... Uh, Will Ferrell is crossing the road and the yellow cab comes out of nowhere and just bumps him over like oh it's absolutely amazing I am disgusted I hate your guts and that's not the way I want to be feeling around Christmas <laughs> time but uh, yes I will be voting for Elf uh, this week so that's Pizza in the Movie with Chicago Town Pizza uh, for this week and that's a wrap on this week's show um, coming up on next week's show oh very special episode it's a top 10 special of our favourite movies from 2021. Rory has picked Elf 10 times, yeah. probably, because he's just a stupid cheat like that. Um, but before we leave you, uh, coming up on today's show, one of our favourite performances from the year uh, is definitely from Matthew McFadden as Tom Wamsgams mm. in uh, Succession Series 3. An absolutely phenomenal actor, uh, which is one of the most gorgeous voices as well, but he just plays that part to perfection. Mm. Uh, in succession but Roy you had the chance to meet him recently uh, for the brand new series I sure did yeah so if you head over to Joe's uh, YouTube channel or The Big Review Ski wherever you get your podcasts you will hear me chatting to uh, Connor Roy and Jerry uh, aka uh, Jay Smith Cameron and Alan Rook but you're about to hear from Matthew McFadden who plays Tom Wamscams which is just one of the most fun character names to say in uh in history. Uh, the full interview is up on the YouTube channel, but the section you're about to hear, and I think it's well timed as well, because Succession season three, oh, it's just so, oh, I just love Succession so much. Uh, and this season was was arguably the best of the three so far. Um, and you're going to hear Tom talk about his very, 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 very complicated relationship with cousin Greg and uh, a particular line from season three that will likely go down in fictional writing history. Excellent. I can't believe you chose Elf. What a scumbag. Merry Christmas. It's complicated. I think yeah. he really, I think he genuinely does like Greg and I think he feels like he's a sort of father figure mentor to him. Uh, but also there's, Greg is a sort of threat and he always was from the get-go because he's he's a cousin I mean he's sort of blood family you know mm-hmm. which Tom isn't 
and he's younger and he's sort of he's got a sort of cheerful sensibility and he's taller than Tom which oh. is worrying a little bit and so I think I don't know but I think I think he genuinely uh, Tom genuinely needs him and he's one of the sort of constants where where Tom doesn't have many of those sort of anchors and I think so when it, when it looks like Greg's presence is a bit shaky like in the in season two when he when Greg sort of moots the idea of 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 leaving it's really really upsetting mm -hmm. um so I don't know I think Tom for, you know Tom wanted to sort of help Greg with his career and Greg seems to have worked it out and he's sort of outgrowing Tom maybe that's the sort of <laughs> that's a sort of a growing worry um but it's a but it's a great scene it's a beautifully written scene <laughs> Thank you.